Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to, I'm going to play my group, De La Soul, because they're from the soul, and just, you got to remember when you take oh three God, glasses of water or two glasses of water and you mix full coloring in the water, even though you mix the full coloring in the water, it's still... Hello, the same Paul's old water. You know, the DJ Go ahead, Prince Paul. And the producer of this particular group. And now off of that and on to the soul. Daylight, that is. If you take three glasses of water and put food coloring in them, you have many different colors, but it's still the same old water. Make the connection. And now, back to our video. Make the connection, y'all. Daylight soul! Daylight soul is from the soul. Ladies and gentlemen, Got one more thing I want to show you guys, and then I'm going to talk about something, okay? And then we gonna go on with our go getting on, with our going on, okay? This is Section 13 of the Federal Reserve Act. Uh oh, I gotta take this call, so I gotta pause. Okay, one second. I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's been about two and a half hours. I've been outside laying cement. I discovered, and I'm going to speak about this real quick, I couldn't lay cement to save my life. It's too heavy, too much mixing. It's not the dirt or anything. It's just I don't have the energy anymore for something like that. However, these 90-pound bags, and I had 96 90-pound bags. That's right. I had 96 90-pound bags. What I had to realize is that it's quick-drying cement. All I do is lay the cement on the ground, add a little bit of water, let it harden, and then at the smoother layer of the cement for when it rains. And that way, because I don't need a sidewalk that's four inches thick, like most of you. I don't need to divide and section it. I just need to make the ground more solid so that I can walk on it when it rains because the ground here is a clay sand mix. And so it is really cakey and all of that yeah, yeah, sink in it when it gets wet. And so I just started opening up the bags and laying them in a line and making the pathways, and it's actually been working. I got to do the dog kennel next because I got to have areas where I can walk in when it does rain. And around the backside of the facility. And after that, I'm done! Yay! So two and a half hours of, I think it was nine bags, maybe ten. Then I'll do the dog kennel tomorrow. And then the next day, this is the plan, but it doesn't always work out like I plan. Then the next day, I'll do the back of the house and be done. And then wait for the year 2086 for it to rain. It only rains in Southern California every other 15 years. And then, you know, everything will be done. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you this. Do you mind if I show you this? This is the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve Act, that's right. I just showed this to you in the last video, but I need you all to please pay attention. It literally says the Federal Reserve Bank may, or any Federal Reserve Bank may make an advance for periods not exceeding 15 days to its member banks on their promissory notes secured by deposit or pledge of bonds or pledge of notes or pledge of certificates of indebtedness or pledge of treasury bills of the United States or by the deposit or pledge of debentures or other such obligations of federal intermediate credit bank which are eligible for purchase by Federal Reserve Banks under Section 13 of the SAC. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you understand how important that is right there. So pay attention to this. Any Federal Reserve Bank may make advances for periods not exceeding 90 days to its member banks on their promissory notes secured by such notes. See, the promissory notes secure themselves. Shh! Drafts or bills of exchange or bankers' acceptances as are eligible for rediscount or purchase by Federal Reserve Banks under the provisions of this Act. Ladies and gentlemen, the Federal Reserve Act this was, see it says, enacted May 24th, 2018. Technically reenacted. <laughs> okay? So y'all need to understand what you're capable of, but you all need to have the law. I will continue to provide information for you so that you can do what you do because, you know, Ray Charles, 
he gonna make it do what it do. Now I did tell y'all I was gonna take y'all to the section, okay? Bank acceptance of credit dollar exchange. Our bank acceptance says to create dollar exchange. I apologize of credit dollar. I got tax credits on my mind because I'm getting ready to do some things. So grab this act. The first thing you want to put in is bills of exchange. That's the first thing you want to add because you want to go to all the sections that deal with the uh, trading with the enemy act. So you definitely want to put bills of exchange. You put bills of exchange, it'll take you to all the sections that talk about bills of exchange because most of your instruments are going to be bills of exchange. See, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, paper, corporative marketing association. Notes, drafts, bills of exchange or acceptances issued or drawn by corporative marketing associations composed of producers of agricultural products shall be deemed to have been issued or drawn for an agricultural purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all agriculture. Everything we do is for agricultural purposes. Shh, don't tell nobody. Some of y'all are going to get some ideas with this. I know she is. I don't want you going too far off the, the market, you know, too far off the rocker, too far off the reservation. No, but yeah, you can use that analogy if you want. I just don't want y'all going too far because some of y'all, oh man, you're taking that way too far. Okay. And y'all can get y'all in trouble. Okay, so stop it. All right, ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the call I received, I do take them. Uh, individuals calling me from penal institutions. Um, there was one such situation where somebody disrespected me. She was the spouse of an individual being housed in a penal institution. Uh, the mate that's incarcerated in the penal institution knows that they can call me anytime. Haven't received a call. I... For the most part, I keep money on my account for people to call. It's not something I let people abuse, okay? Some people I let call me on a regular basis. Other people, hey, don't, don't, uh, this ain't that type of party. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. All right. That's why I was looking up the Federal Intermediate Credit Banks, okay? Uh, something... When I was doing some research today, something says, hey, there's a Federal Intermediate Credit Bank. Okay, never heard of it before, technically, that I paid attention to it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we are right here. Application for notes by Federal Reserve Banks. Let's see what the update is on this. Oh, well, look at that. When was this last updated? May 12, 2018. So, this is the law. What's the law? Any... Federal Reserve Bank may make application to the local Federal Reserve agent for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes here in before provided for as it may require. Such application shall be accompanied by tender to the local Federal Reserve agent for of collateral in an amount equal to the sum of the Federal Reserve notes thus applied for and issued pursuant to such application. The collateral, collateral, tender, see, tender, local federal reserve agent of collateral the collateral is a security thus offered shall be notes drafts bills of exchange these are securities not under the securities exchange act no but under the banking act securities exchange act is not a banking act it's the securities act aren't securities banking a business shut up Whew. all right Ladies and gentlemen, also take a look at special drawing rights, the Special Drawing Rights Act. I'm not going to put that up. I do have it. I downloaded it the other day. Take a look at that. All right. Now, you, the rest of this is the rest of the amendment to the Trading with the Enemy Act. Substitution of collateral, retirement of Federal Reserve notes. Okay. If any Federal Reserve Bank may, at its discretion, withdraw collateral deposits with the local Federal Reserve agent for the protection of the Federal Reserve notes issued to it, and shall at the same time substitute, therefore, other collateral of equal amount with the approval of the Federal Reserve agent under regulations. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, what, this is the reason why you use your house as collateral. When you substitute the collateral, but hold on, pay attention. If you're going to substitute the collateral for the note, it says, shall at the same time substitute, therefore, other collateral equal to the amount with the approval of the Federal Reserve agent. So they have to return the original collateral. Okay? They, they try to be slick, but it doesn't work that way. 
because the original collateral security had worth equal to the amount. Okay, you are not withdrawing the deposit. See, pay attention, withdraw collateral deposited. So you're not withdrawing the collateral deposited. And if they did, it's a violation of truth lending act because they didn't tell you that's what you were doing. But even if it were, all you have to do is retender the collateral. But they got paid. Okay? Now, hold on. Any Federal Reserve Bank shall further be entitled to receive back the collateral deposited with the Federal Reserve agent for the security of any notes with respects to which the bank has made a payment to the Secretary of the Treasury under Section 4 of the Old Series Currency Adjustment Act. You guys might want to take a look at that. This is section number six. Okay. Under Title 12. Well, it's not actually Title 12. Don't want to deal with Title 12. You want to deal with the Federal Reserve Act, Section 13. Okay. And this would be one of the subsection six, but I got to see what letter it's under. Come on now. Yeah, it's Section 13. Section 16. So under Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act, uh, subsection number 6, but I don't know if it's A6, B6, 2, 6, 1, 6, so give me a second to make sure of which 6. See how that's 3, then this is 1, then that's 2, and then that's 15. So, you know, it says Section 16. Yeah, so pay attention to this. This is, this is how confusing this is going to get for some of you guys. Under the Federal Reserve Act, you want to go under the section, and you're just going to type in Application for Notes by Federal Reserve Bank. Application for Notes by Federal Reserve Bank. That's the first one. That's the one you know as 212. You know what? I, I apologize. Let me give it to you. Let me give you the actual coded section. 414. Okay? So, I said 212, 412. But 414 is this one right here. Okie dokie. Now, what I need to highlight, and I need y'all to give me a second. We're going to go to 6, not 414. I, it's because I'm doing too much right now. i got too much on my mind. i got to get that site up because this is how important this is going to be. And then I have to do a video talking about the site. Custody of reserve notes, gold certificates, and lawful money. We're not interested in that. We're interested in 415. We're interested in 415, so 412 and 415, those are your friends. Go over 415. Pay attention. Any Federal Reserve Bank may at its discretion withdraw collateral deposited to the local Federal Reserve agent. Any Federal Reserve agent shall further be entitled to receive back the collateral deposited with the Federal Reserve agent, that means you, for the security of any notes with respects to which such a bank has made payment to the Secretary of the Treasury under Section 4 of the Old Series Adjustments Act. This is what they do. This is how they get paid. This is Section Number 2. These, you are any Federal Reserve Bank, not them. You shall be entitled to receive back the collateral with the Federal Reserve agent that you deposited with the Federal Reserve agent. See, the collateral deposited with the Federal Reserve agent. Now, some of you may not have gotten that right away. Shame on you. So let me do it to you this way. Come on, all the way up. We could go, no, not there. We could go, hey, where is it? Here first, but we're not going to go here first. We're going to go here first, okay? want y'all to pay attention. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of any direct obligation to the United States or any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank of acceptances, acquired under the provisions of this act. Any Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit in the manner prescribed to, by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the control of the currency circulating notes in blank. That's you. That's not the bank. However, they extend to you credit. The credit, we've already read it twice today, the credit is up to 90, day, 90, not, not 90 days. That's the money they receive back from the Treasury. Okay, 
So now that you understand what's going on, let's get back to this and read this again. You shall be entitled to receive back the collateral you deposited. That means your notes, your draft, your bills of exchange. They cannot hold on to it with the Federal Reserve agent for the security of any notes with respects to which such a bank has made payment to the Secretary of the Treasury under Section 4 of the Old Series Currency Adjustment, uh, Adjustment Act. Federal Reserve notes so deposited shall not be reissued except upon compliance with the conditions of the original issue. You guys have got to understand what it means when it says any Federal Reserve agent. All Federal Reserve notes and gold certificates shall be um, special drawing rights certificates and lawful money issued to or deposited with the Federal Reserve agent under the provisions of the Federal Reserve Act shall hereafter be held for such agents under such rules and regulations the Board of Governors Federal Reserve System may prescribe. Now remember, you saw the letter. I showed it to you. Hold on. Because some of y'all still ain't going to get this. Where that letter at? This letter right here. This letter, where where she say it at? Let me let me get this uh cow. I mean this young lady. Um, therefore, we are unable to provide you with any responsive information. What was I asking? Wait, hold on. Some of y'all don't understand what was being asked. So they gon' they gonna show y'all what I asked. Procedures for banking institutions for depositing and receiving as deposits, notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptances. Trader acceptances and other United States government contract obligations. She said, we ain't got no procedures for you, homie. Hold on. Therefore, we are unable to provide you with any any information. If you believe that the determination that no records exist is incorrect. Okay, so they're saying no records exist. They can't provide me with any information. And it says their search did not locate any documentation. Responsive to my request. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, so with that being said, people, pay attention. That means that under such rules and regulations, well, there are no rules and regulations. We just found that out. Shall be construed to prohibit the Federal Reserve agent from depositing gold certificates and special drawing rights certificates with the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve to be held by such board, subject to his order, and with the Treasury of the United States for the purposes authorized by law. Ladies and gentlemen, go get your money. Such an agent, such an agent, such an agent, and such Federal Reserve Bank shall be jointly liable for the safekeeping of such Federal Reserve notes, gold certificates, special drawing rights certificates, and lawful money. Safekeeping. That means you have to deposit it with someone else, or you have to literally put it in a safe place. Either you use it to acquire other property, or you keep it in a safe place. Go ahead and check out the regulation. Guarantee. Guarantee. But again, this is 217. That's 218. This is all the Trading with the Enemy Act, what we're reading right now. We don't care about the custody of unused notes and dies and casting and all of that because that's not our. That's not our issue. Appropriation for engraving checks and drafts to be received on deposit at par. Now, let's try this one. I don't know. This 19, 419? No, that's 360. Hold on. Hoo-wee. And then we got one more we're going to do, and that's going to be it, y'all. Y'all going to have to go over this by yourself. Every Federal Reserve Bank shall receive upon deposit at par from depository institutions or from the Federal Reserve are from Federal Reserve Bank checks and other items, including negotiable orders of withdrawal and share drafts or drafts drawn upon any of its depositors. It says a share draft or draft drawn upon a share draft or drafts drawn a share drafts. So go look up what share drafts are, people, and drafts drawn upon its depositors and when remitted i'm giving you a remittance mother by the federal reserve bank checks or other items including negotiable orders of withdrawals or share drafts and drafts drawn by any depositor in any federal reserve bank or depository institution upon funds 
to the credit of said to the credit of said to the credit of said depositor in said reserve bank uh, and please credit the same to my account to the credit of such the depositor in said reserve bank or depository institution nothing herein contains shall be construed as to prohibit a depository institution by the way you are a depository institution what you didn't know that you were a depository institution hey hold on that's the wrong one hold on hey hey um uh franklin franklin i'm sorry i'm calling roosevelt hey roosevelt i got i got a question for you okay hold on uh during such holiday the secretary of the treasury with the approval of the president and under such regulations as he may prescribe, we found out there ain't no regulation is authorized and empowered to permit any and all such banking institutions to perform any and all the usual banking functions. To direct, require, and permit the issuance of clearinghouse certificates and other evidences of claim against such assets of the banking institution. And to authorize the direct creation in such banking institutions, special trust accounts for the receipt and of new deposits. For the receipt of new deposit. For the receipt of new deposits which shall be subject to withdrawal on the band without any restrictions or limitations and shall be separately kept separately in cash or on deposit with the federal reserve or invested in obligations of the united states hold on pay attention now as used in this order the term banking institution shall include all federal reserve banks national banks banks bank banks trust companies, savings banks, building and loan associations, credit unions, and other organizations, partnerships, associations, or persons, per per persons, engaged in the business of receiving deposits, engaged in the business of receiving deposits, engaged in the business of receiving deposits, engaged in business and receiving deposits, making loans, discounting business paper, and transacting any other form of banking business. Again, you are a depository, you receive deposits, you are in a depository institution. You receive deposits, you are a depository institution. Apologize. Oh, sorry, you don't get the institution part? Hold on. Banking institution, receiving deposits, depository institution. Told you, statutory interpretation. All you got to do is read. Wish I could make this stuff up, but you can't. Okay, so that we get it clear. Federal Reserve Bank and... The charge which may be imposed for the service of clearing or collecting collections rendered by the Federal Reserve Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, I ain't going to go on any further because I'm tired. I got work to do. Got work to do. All right. But you guys, now you get somebody got some expenses right here. Man, that's expensive. I don't know if I can handle that. Preservation of provisions of the Act of March 14, 1900. Let's see. Nothing in this section shall be construed as amending the section of the Act of March 14, 1900. I got to go find the Act of March 14, 1900 by the Acts of by the Acts of March 4, 1900 and 7th and 7 for uh, 1907 and March 2nd, 1911 and June 12th, 1916. Nor may the provision of this section be construed as to apply to deposits made or to the receipt of certificates issued under these acts. And deposits of bonds and national blah, 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 application. Application to sell bonds, securing, okay. Purchase of bonds, nope. Allotment for bonds, nope. Come on now, transfer and payment. Man, you get to transfer things. You get the oh, oh, Federal Reserve Bank notes. They stop. They no longer circulate these Federal Reserve Bank notes. The Federal Reserve purchasing such bonds shall be permitted to take out an amount of circulating notes equal to the par value of such bonds. Not anymore. Collateral for notes. Collateral for notes. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States, A, of any direct obligation to the United States or any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, trade acceptances, acquired under provisions of this act, the Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury. Ladies and gentlemen, I just read that section to you. Hold on now. Got to go all the way back up to the top, all the way to the tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tippity-tipp
This is section four. This is the amendment of March 9, 1933. Here's the proof that it still exists. See, upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States, A, and you see B, come on now. Pay attention. Upon deposit with the Treasury Secretary of the Treasury of the United States, A, and then there go B. Any notes, drafts, bills of exchange. Any notes. See how they highlight any notes? Any notes. Any notes. Supreme Court says that doesn't mean any notes. Yes, it does. That's why the Supreme Court said it's a rebuttable presumption. Under this act, it means any notes. Under any other act, it means Securities Exchange Act. So it means notes with a maturity date of greater than nine months. Ta-da! Now, we have this here. And what I need you guys to do, look at that. Unless the proclamation of the emergency recognized by the president, by proclamation, March 6, 1933, which is Presidential Proclamation 2039, has been terminated. Okay? It hasn't been terminated. But what they did do is they changed circulating notes. Uh-oh, omitted from the U.S. Code. <laughs> Wait a minute, how can you admit omit the whole act from the U.S. Code? Impossible. Now pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's still, pay, pay attention. Some of y'all ain't getting it. So pay attention. It's omitted from the U.S. Code, but it's not omitted from the Federal Reserve Act. Shh, don't tell nobody. It's omitted from the U.S. Code, but it is not omitted from the Federal Reserve Act. Why? What's so special about this part of the act? Pay attention. This is that sixth paragraph that the Congress amended. Pay attention so you get it. It says quite plainly, and remember, they speak about circulating notes. So the circulating notes have been replaced by Federal Reserve notes. It says, and when issued against the securities of notes, your notes, drafts, your drafts, bills of exchange, your bills of exchange, or bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of this act, the amount thereof shall be equal to not more than 90% of the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, so deposited as security. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States for the purposes, same purposes as national bank notes and shall be redeemable in lawful money in the United States on presentation to the United States Treasury or at a bank of issue. Ladies and gentlemen, this is still there. Your notes, droughts, bills of exchange are receivable at par. Redeemable and receivable. They are at par with national bank notes. This has not been taken out. Now, pay attention. This is part of the Federal Reserve Act, but there is no codification. They did not codify this. Why didn't they codify this and they codified everything else? Because this tells you that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange are redeemable and lawful money. Shh! Don't you dare tell nobody what I just told you. They might get upset with you. Okay. I'm going to go all the way down to the tippity tippity bottom because we might discover some more stuff. Don't care about no treasury notes and exchange 3% bonds. Bank reserves, I'm not really interested in the reserves of the bank because they don't have to have gold reserves, so we are all right. But guess what? The reserve section is a long section because I see this is a long way to go. So we're going to stop here. I do hope that some of you realize the value of what was just told to you. That there is no codification of the section that I've been reading to you for over a year now. There is no codification. But it's in the code. Okay, it's written in the code. It's just, it's not in the code. Does that make any sense? Why did they omit it from the code? Because all they did was got rid of circulating notes. But remember, what did I just show you? Mama, what did he just show us? Wait a minute. Where's paragraph six? There he is. Paragraph six. Know what it says right here. Know what it says. When such circulating notes are issued against securities and obligations. Okay, that's talking about such circulating notes. Now, notice this. When issued against securities of drafts, notes, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, 
Under the provisions of this act, the amount thereof shall be equal to not more than 90% of the estimated value. Now, how did this paragraph start off? Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of any direct obligation of the United States or any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank of acceptances, and trade acceptances acquired under the provision of this act. Any Federal Reserve Bank making a deposit in such a manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled, shall be entitled, shall be entitled to receive give and take from the Treasury circulating notes in blank, duly registered. So, such notes, not circulating notes, such notes, which notes? These notes, such notes, draft bills of exchange, these notes, not circulating notes, such notes, estimated value of such notes, draft bills of exchange, such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of Treasury. So if you guys are going to do those notes, that's what I was doing, asking them what were the rules, what were the procedures. They didn't provide them. So take this section from the Federal Reserve Act and do a FOIA request. Now we do know, pay attention, we do know that this is Section 411, but according to them, according to these individuals, it's been omitted from the U.S. Code. We know it's Section 401 because what does 401 says? Hold on. 401 says such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank and shall be redeemable and lawful money of the United States on presentation to the Treasury or any other bank of issue. So we know that it's Section 401, but they said it's been omitted from the code. I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow them. You want to omit something, we'll omit it, mother. Okay, that's it. Again, I hope this is beneficial. I hope you understood. Some of you are not going to understood, and then you're not going to understand. And then you're going to be lost. And then somebody's going to find you some space. But other than that, while you are lost and trying to find yourself, because, you know, that's how lost you are, just know that somebody gave you some information that might be beneficial. So if you didn't understand it the first time, go over it until you do. Go over it until you do. And I mean literally, go over it until you do. If you do that, if you make that the practice with everything you don't understand, then you'll become an expert at it. Because... If you can get something that you didn't get at first, man, nobody will be able to take it away from you. Now, may, maybe some of y'all didn't hear me. If you can get that which you couldn't get at first, doesn't matter if it's information, doesn't matter if it's money. If you can get what you couldn't get at first, nobody will be able to take it away from you. Because by that time, you'll be an expert. Again, nobody will be able to take it away from you because at that point, you'll be an expert. So, I hope you get it. All right, got to go, y'all. Take care. Just remember, it's been omitted from the act. No, it's been omitted from the U.S. Code, but not omitted from the act. Got to go.